it really requires a fair bit of thought and, a, and preparation's probably a good place to start. Those cows are going to calve, they're going to need a minimum of 60 days from when the last cow calves in order to allow their reproductive tracts to get back into shape again. And also remember they're going to be under fairly high lactation stress during those 60 days so they will need to be uh, fairly closely monitored with regard to getting the right nutrition. Uh, they need to be in a, in a forward score at least three at the time of the AI program. So they'll probably, if, you know, if you're doing really well, they will carve in that condition or better, but they won't stay there. So just keep really close tabs on their nutrition. They may require a fresh paddock. They may require some supplement. They may require lick, depending on where you are and what you have available. It's pretty intensive when it comes time for the program. So the cows that are, have a better temperament, have been through the yards plenty of times before and haven't shown any adverse reaction to it, they're going to be the mob of cows that you're going to maximise your results with. Preparation, probably selecting genetics. If you are doing heifers, you need to look at um, you know, the genetics you're going to use over those heifers. It's going to be their first calf. We don't want to end up with dystochias and we don't want to end up with um, major problems at calving when you get that far. The second point with semen is if it's not in your tank at your yards or at your place, then you, you know, don't assume that the freight is going to get it there in a timely manner. We've had way too many disasters. You know, it's not unusual for shippers to go dry and lose everything. Your injectable hormones, um, the other really important part about them is storage. Um, there, there is a cold chain supply. They will come from wherever they come from and, and you, you will be safe that they've arrived. Um, check that they're cold when they arrive. It is quite safe to store those products at say room temperature in the fridge and that would be my recommendation. Needles are cheap. The important thing is getting that injection into the muscle of that cow and not taking in a whole pile of contamination and dust with you. So get that injection into that muscle cleanly. Use a different needle for every cow. Uh, factor in this whole program about um, putting an AI program together. Um, I'm specifically talking about reproductive diseases. Do, have you had these diseases before? Do you test for the, these diseases? Um, are your cows in a closed herd? Um, you know, we need to look at the risk that your cows that are going into this program may have been exposed. Vaccination obviously is a way to be fairly accurately sure that you don't have the disease. Um, and th that's what we generally recommend for all AI programs is to be up to date with, with vaccinations. We had a, a, a mob of AI cows that hadn't been vaccinated, but it was dry and they were being fed, um, fed a ration through a self feeder. Now, what we didn't know and we didn't find out until later on when we started testing is that the pigs were also joining them at the feeder and these cows were full of lepto. So we, yeah, we're looking at a 25-30% conception rate. Now that is a really, really bad result from the farmer and it could have been, could have been avoided with the vaccinations. So we come to the program, be sure that you have your protocol in front of you, be sure that you put it into a calendar, be sure that you are all over it and that you, you're not going to miss the times and the days that you need to treat and the, the, the drug, the hormone that you need to treat with. So really important that the bulls are secure and if you can't be, if you can't control your bulls or you can't make your bulls that secure, keep the cows in a yard for that, for that period of time. If you have an issue, if you look at your diary and you missed a, an injection or if you've given an injection early and yeah, whatever it is, it, it happens, it's, it's human nature, but please, please be in communication with whoever it is that's supplying the program and the protocols, whether that's back to your AI tech, back to your vet, back to Vetiquinol, and we can generally adjust things so that we can make, make this program work. The protocol is the protocol, please don't cut corners, you know, even things like the heat patch which um, you put on, we need to have that even though in, in our particular case we scan every ovary and, and, and look for a follicle at AI time. We need to see that those um, Estratec heat patches are, are going off uh, during that time. Have a look at them when they're on heat. Don't stick them out in the, the holding paddock and forget about them until the next day. Just, um, yeah, attention to detail. It's a big investment on your part. It's really important to have a, a good vet crush uh, that has a kit gate and has a vet, um, vet box at the back. Um, not only from a safety perspective, but again, from a timing perspective and for a, for a low stress, high, yeah, improved welfare outcome. Um, have yards that have water in them, good clean water that they can access, that all of them can access um, easily and you know enough space in that yard that you can have hay available and they've got you know place to sit down and be happy. Now you know one thing I can say and again I can't measure it but 
happy cows seem to get very good results. Usually we say put your cover bulls out 10 days after you AI. So we are looking at a you know, 65 to 75% um, take rate on your AI program. So that, do the calculation, how many cows or heifers are likely to be cycling in that, in that next window and make sure there's enough bull power there for them. Uh, again, artificial reproduction is not natural service, so we need to make sure that we don't spend all this time and effort in getting the nutrition right and getting the program right and then just putting them out in the paddock and forgetting about them. Keep tabs on them, make sure they've got plenty of feed in front of them, plenty of energy and yeah, do yourself a favour, go for a drive you know, 21 days, 20, 20 to 23 days after that program and you have a bit of a look there, see what's going on and that'll give you a little bit of an insight into how you went with your program. Uh, preg testing generally will do that six weeks after the program. If you want to spin those that mob around and re-AI, we can do an earlier preg test and that and start the next program at the time of the preg test.